Would you like to take what you've created, maybe some doodles or flowcharts that look like this, and get them into Rome Research looking a little bit better like that? If so, then this is the video for you. Hey, I'm Adam with Productivity Academy, and if you're looking for more great content, you can go ahead and subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Rome. We're gonna get into it. I'm not gonna walk you through drawing a diagram by hand. I'll just show you, I literally sketched this out. Uh, very simple, something I put into my journal. Um, a lot of times I'll do something like this maybe for a project, um, you know, something I'm just diagramming out and get it down, but then I wanna get it into my digital notes. I wanna flowchart in Rome. So what we can do instead of then taking that and then having to learn the syntax of using something like mermaid markdown code, we can just take a picture and take that into something like chat GPT and have it create the code for us. Then we can copy and paste, make some small edits if needed. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna head over here to a different tab. Uh, we are going to be using uh, ChatGPT, and I'm just using a tool called Typing Mind. If you're interested, you can find the link. Um, but it's a really neat, it's basically like a wrapper. It just kind of extends the functionality. You don't have to use it. Um, it's just something neat where you can like save prompts. Um, you can use different models. You can do a bunch of different stuff with it. If you're interested or it sounds neat, just check it out, um, see if it's for you. So what I've used down here is a very simple prompt. Just create a mermaid markdown flowchart. Mermaid again, being the markdown code we want to use for this and the attached image. I've taken a screenshot and uploaded that. And when I click send, that is going to send it off and it's gonna analyze the image and return us code. That's the goal. So let's go ahead, give that a shot. And you can see in the background, it's thinking about it for a second and it should spit out the code pretty quickly. This is a pretty simple diagram. So let's see what we get back. There we go. Here's the mermaid markdown code. So all I'm gonna do is copy that and then we are going to come over here and and roam. So I have something obviously called mermaid flowchart example, but wherever you're doing this, what you wanna do is start with the double curly brackets and just type in mermaid. All right, once we leave this line, we're gonna get an example. So I'm gonna hit enter, return, and you can see that it pops up kind of some pretty helpful text actually. It's got read the docs if you wanna find out more about this, about formatting about different ways you could do it. So maybe you wanna do a left to right diagram instead of top to down like ours is, uh, Gantt charts, there's all sorts of other stuff. For this example, I just wanna show you the basic flow so you can save time doing this. And if you're interested in this different type of stuff, you can definitely go in there and check it out. Okay, so we've hit enter. What we wanna do now is indent and we get that error in the code because it's looking down here for the code. So all we're gonna do is paste and we're like, oh no, all it got was start and do this. But basically it's just limiting the size. So we just need to scroll down, click and drag rather, and we will get all of that. So a quick word on what's going on down here. If you're not familiar with mermaid code at all, this might be helpful for you in case you need to do some small edits or something gets a, a little messed up. It's basically assigning variables and then telling it what it says in the blocks. So for example, A, has start in the text. So this block is A. And then you no longer need to refer to, uh, you don't have to like spell it out each time, you could just refer to it as A. In this simple diagram, it's not that big of a deal, but you can see uh, down here on C that it is connected to two different things. So it's assigned the variable C, and then we could just use C twice. Now, there is something it did get incorrect. If it's a yeah, usually a decision point, an if statement, we probably want to have it look differently. Um, so for C, we should try the curly brackets instead of the square brackets. And let me delete that. There we go. That changes it. And that's just one of the minor modifications you can do. Again, you can go and check out the docs. I'll leave the link below if you want to find out more ways to do that. Um, if you need to format your text or you need to add text yourself, make sure that there's no spaces between the variable and what it actually says in the block. For example, if I enter a space here, you can see it totally breaks it. Uh, remove it and we're good to go. Or if I just wanted to say um, something else, we could do that and it's gonna update it right there. So really handy, again, being able to go from the journal, maybe from a drawing you've had literally back of the envelope or whatever it is, um, or even maybe taking a screenshot and then having a GPT model or another large language model 
give you the code back and then pop it in here is really nice. Cleans it up, makes it really easy to visualize. Perhaps you could want to use it for presentations or maybe just for your own notes for something more at Evergreen. So great way to do that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments about this, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to get back to you.